morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunderland Minster for this national online service. My name is Stuart Bain. I sport the wonderful title of the Provost of Sunderland Minster, and I, I lead the clergy team here. Our service this morning has the theme of listening to God's call, and of course, we are uh, moving into Peter Tide time traditionally when many are ordained to the diaconate and to the priesthood within the church. But it's also a reminder that God calls us all as disciples and in his service. The Minster Church came into being uh, not long after Sunderland became a city in the 90s. We're a city centre church with all the joys and tribulation that that brings. We're open and many people come through our doors. We work in partnership with a variety of different groups. We have a civic role, a university role, the chaplain, Anglican chaplain is on our team. Over the past few years, we have developed a particular ministry to asylum seekers and refugees. And if you were to come on a Sunday, you would find a very multinational congregation and many Iranian Christians who fled their country because of their faith. We believe it's our role to welcome them as they seek sanctuary. So our vision for this place is that we be open to God and open to all and that we live out the inclusive love of God for all people. So we've gathered in this place and online for worship because Jesus invites us to come. We come as we are with our faith and our doubts, with our successes and our failures, because Jesus invites us to come. We come with what we have, bringing with us the events and experiences of the last week because Jesus invites us to come. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And so let us worship together. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we meet today, wherever we are in God's presence, we are conscious that so many times we are deaf to God's call. O oh God, we come to you in sorrow for our sins for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us for behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us for failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us, and help us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A special prayer for St. Peter the Collect. Almighty God, who inspired your apostle, St. Peter, to confess Jesus as Christ and Son of the living God, build up your church upon this rock that in unity and peace it may proclaim one truth and follow one Lord, your Son, our Saviour, Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. So let's praise God together as our minster choir leads us in the words of the Gloria. باب دوازده آیات یک تا یازده به آیه پتروس از زندان در آن زمان هیرودیس پادشاه دست ستم بر برخی از افراد کلیسا دراز کرد به دستور او یعقوب برادر یوحنا را به شمشیر کشتند و چون دید این کار یهودیان را خوشنود ساخت گامی فراتر برداشت و پتروس را نیز گرفتار کرد در این ایام ادفتی رخ داد هیرودیس پس از گرفتار کردن پتروس او را به زندان انداخت و چهار دسته چهار نفری را به نگهبانی او برگماشت و بران بود که پس از ایتف پسخ او را در برابر همگان محاکمه کند پس پتروس را در زندان نگاه داشتند اما کلیسا با جدیت تمام نزد خدا برای او دعا می کرد شب قبل از روزی که ایرودیس قصد داشت پتروس را به محاکمه بکشد او به دو زنجیر بسته و به میان دو سرباز خفته بود و نگهبانان نیز مقابل در زندان پاس می دادن ناگاه فرشته خداوند ظاهر شد و نوری در درون زندان درخشید. فرشته به پهلوی پت پتروس زد و او را بیدار کرد. گفت زود برخیست. در دم زمجیرها از دستش فرو افتادند. فرشته به او گفت کمربندت را ببند و کفش بپا کن. پتروس چنین کرد. سپس فرشته به او گفت ردایت را بر خود بپیچ و از پی من بیا. پس پتروس از پی او از زندان بیرون رفت. اما باور نمی کرد که آنچه فرشته انجام می دهد واقعی است. بلکه گمان میکرد رویا میبیند آنها از نگهبانان اول و دوم گذشتند و به در آهنینی رسیدند که روح به شهر باز میشد دروازه خود به خود مقابل ایشان گشوده شد پس بیرون رفتند و چون به انتهای کوچه رسیدند ناگهان فرشته ناپدید شد آنگاه پتروس به خود آمد و گفت اکنون دیگر یقین دارم که خداوند فرشته خود را فرستاده و مرا از چنگ هیرودیس و آنچه قوم یهود در انتظارش بودند رهانیده است آمین. I've already said that for Peter, the first thing was the call of Jesus to follow him, along, of course, with the other disciples, come and follow me. 
We're going to hear now from one of our Minster community, Zoe, who came to faith during this time of lockdown. So Zoe, tell us how you arrived in Sunderland. Um, I moved to Sunderland after I signed up to do my master's degree in film and television. How did you end up getting involved with the church? Um, it first started when I met Chris Howson, who is the university chaplain at the University of Sunderland. Um, he got me involved with some volunteer work. At first it was um, helping out with the refugees and the asylum seekers within our community. I joined Feast on Sundays, which was online due to the pandemic, and then on Mondays I would join Soul Soup, and this allowed us to look at different Bible passages in depth. Um, and I think actually I've learned a lot from other people's perspectives, and it's made me open my mind up to uh, the meaning behind uh, the, the, the text. I suppose my family were quite surprised when I had my call to faith. Um, I grew up in a very secular household, um, and I never really had a good understanding in, of the world. In fact, it scared me quite a lot. And I think finding my faith, I've now got this whole new meaning to life. And I feel as though having this community surrounding me, it's given me a whole new sense of purpose and meaning to my own life too. My image of Jesus isn't necessarily the same as as someone else's. I see him as a very inclusive person. I see him as a very welcoming and friendly character to all involved. Um, and he is someone that truly loves us. We are his children at the end of the day. Um, and I can't imagine him saying no to anyone based on their, their religion or their, um, you know, their, their views on the world. I think that sense of being loved has made a huge difference to me. Um, I now feel very held and a lot more calm. Um, I think this is the first time in a very long time where I felt more like myself again. Um, my family have commented on how, how different I am now in a good way. Um, I'm a lot more content. I smile a lot more. My anxiety levels have reduced massively. So a few weeks ago you were baptised. Um, how did that feel? Yeah, my baptism was a huge, huge, uh, huge thing for me. Um, it was just something that I felt it was time for it. It was time to be baptised for me. Um, even though I've been the kind of person that always wants to help people, especially those that need it the most, I think my discipleship like, keeps that in the forefront of my mind at all times now. Hear the Gospel of Christ according to Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the gospel of Christ. Now may I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So you're working on the seashore doing your job as a fisherman. And Jesus comes along 
and invites you to join him. Come and follow me, he says. And Peter does. This is a remarkable story. We don't know if Peter knew of Jesus or whether he'd heard him preach. But the power of Jesus' call is so strong that Peter leaves his nets and begins a journey of faith. He's now on the road with Jesus, and what a journey that will be. There will be joy and pain, grief and wonder, failure and triumph, and the continued call from Jesus to follow. For Peter, it began on the seashore. Where did it begin for you? We've heard from Zoe how her life has been changed by the love of Jesus and how this gave her confidence to openly speak of her faith in baptism. She is on the road, walking with other disciples here at the Minster, together seeking to be open to God and open to all. We know as we read the Gospels that Peter had a lot to learn. He's not always a great listener. He's impetuous and he often gets the wrong end of the stick and misunderstands what Jesus says. But I find huge encouragement in the fact that he keeps at it. What a moment it must have been when he comes to a point and recognizes Jesus to be the one, God's chosen, the Messiah. How he must have felt when Jesus calls him the rock. We know that it's a wobbly rock at times. Remember the night before Jesus died, under great pressure, he denies his Lord. And Jesus is crucified. But it's not the end. Jesus seeks him out in love after the resurrection. Feed my sheep, he says to him. Feed my sheep. Peter is to be the leader one of the leaders in the church, given power through the Holy Spirit to speak of Jesus with courage. Peter will be faithful even unto death. For Peter, his discipleship was to lead him into leadership. Jesus' call was to change the direction of his life completely. Listen to Lillian, another member of the Minster community, and hear how God has been at work in her life. My name is Lillian. I was born into a Christian family, baptised in a Methodist chapel, went to Sunday school, was taught to recite the Lord's Prayer by my nana before I even started school. At a young age, I felt God calling me to the Church of England. And with my dad's permission, I began my Anglican journey of faith. I was confirmed at 12 years of age, and I can still feel the wonderful warmth of the Holy Spirit through the hands of the bishop as he laid his hands on my head. This is such a feeling, it's still with me today. My life took me to another part of the country to live where I found love and married my husband of 35 years. We have two children, now grown with their own families. My journey brought me back to my roots, where we have now lived for the last 32 years. The parish church I attended now was of the Anglo-Catholic tradition. Here I saw God at work in the poorest parishes, 
helping the poor and vulnerable in society. I felt God call on me to be part of his ministry. And here I trained as an APA. I spent four wonderful years going out among the people of the parish and they came to know and trust me. They came to ask questions and ask for prayers. Some would just ask me to listen to their story, knowing they were speaking in confidence. This was a great privilege, feeling God's hands touching them through my mission and ministry. I began to feel a deep sense of God calling me to read a ministry. I went to Lindisfarne College of Theology as an independent student, training alongside readers and ordinands. During the second year of training, I was not able to afford to carry on as an independent, and I was guided by my tutor to speak with the DDO of Durham Diocese. This I did, and was that very same day sent the forms to fill in and return for the reader selection process. God guided me to the Minster Church in the city of Sunderland. Here I am now a community reader in training. The welcome and warmth I received here is of great spiritual depth. Such a blessing. God's guiding hand through my journey of faith has now brought me to where I feel my journey can be completed. As a community reader, I feel this to be a bridge in ministry, taking the Gospels of Jesus' teaching out into the community, in the city where we have a wide diversity of people, of faith and no faith. The Minster is a place of welcome to the refugees in our city. This is such a blessing to be able to walk with them, also to learn of their faith, as we are all children of God, the creator of all people. Also, the city has a lot of homeless sleeping in the streets, in doorways. The Minster is an inclusive church that reaches out to all and welcomes all. I am inspired by our northern saints, Bede, Cuthbert, Aidan, Chad and Benedict Biscop who served and educated the people of the North. Such a journey of faith God has brought me through in my life. I feel he has now brought me to where he sees my ministry to be. This time of the year, we will see many ordained as deacon and priest. We rejoice with them, we pray with them, and we give thanks for their response to God's call in their lives. Here's Chris, a member of the Minster team in ordained ministry for just a short time and in a pandemic. God calls all of us in many different ways to fulfill many different roles in life. No one can claim any safety from God's plans for your life, no matter how young or old you are. Sometimes he shouts at you so that you cannot ignore him. More often it is through very gentle encouragement. But you must give yourself time to learn to listen to him. It is so too easy to say no and take the easy way out. But be sure, he never gives up and is waiting for your yes, Lord. Although I had always felt a gentle calling to church ministry, yet after initial probings in midlife which led me to attaining a theology degree, I fought against God's call for many years. After a period of serious illness, I felt closer to Jesus and had the distinct impression that he was supporting me and had a mission for me once I had recovered. Now, retired, I thought God had forgotten me. But no, at the ordination of deacons in 2016 at Durham Cathedral, he called me in a very close, a very personal, spiritual way, in a manner that left no room for me to say no. After 50 years as a server at God's altar, I was eventually ordained deacon myself at Michaelmas in 2019 and priested at Sunderland Minster 
last Michaelmas under COVID restrictions. It has been a very strange two years. Just as I was starting my ministry, we were all thrown into a series of lockdowns with only a few weeks grace in between to practice pastoral ministry face to face, albeit behind face masks. My ministry has not been one that I had expected. No funerals, no christenings or weddings, but rather having to learn new IT skills to spread God's word through the online services which reach out much further than our parish boundaries across the country and beyond as well as learning to use Zoom for baptism and Bible classes both in English and Farsi using interpreters this has led me to baptising two Iranian and one Afghan refugee since lockdown was eased this was all an experience which I will hold in my heart forever. Jesus says, follow me. A call that echoes across the years from that seashore. Who knows where the call of discipleship will take us. As you walk with Jesus, know that he will ask things of you. Know that there will be things for you to do to share God's love. Be open to this and listen to that call. It will be costly. It will be hard. But there is always life there for us, the abundant life of Jesus. On St. Peter's Day, I will celebrate 40 years as a priest, all here in the Diocese of Durham. What a journey. Like Peter, there has been joy and sorrow, pain and grief. failure and successes. Soon I will retire from full-time ministry, but I move into the next phase in the knowledge and the lived-out experience that the one who calls is faithful, is faithful always faithful. Listen to me, Jesus is saying. Listen to me. And the adventure will continue. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We move now into a time of prayer. And our intercessions will be led by Jackie, who is one of the, the Minster team. And they will conclude with the Lord's Prayer in Makaton, led by Brent, also part of our Minster congregation and community. Our choir will lead us in the Chese chant Ubi Caritas et Amor, where there is love, God is there 
And of course, we remember the call to love. Love our neighbors as ourselves. God of inclusive love, who has called us each by name and knows us, we come to you in prayer. We give you thanks for your life-changing gifts of love, mercy and grace. May we remember as your church that we are called to reflect these things in all we do. We pray for those to be ordained deacon or priest this Petertide, giving thanks for their gifts and all they will bring to your service. God of love, help us listen to your call. We pray for your world, Creator God, that the hungry be fed, that the poor receive justice, that the full humanity of all be seen and celebrated. We pray for those who are homeless, for asylum seekers and refugees, for those who face discrimination on the grounds of gender, race, sexuality and disability. Make your church a place of welcome for all. Give us courage to challenge, grace to engage, and a heart to seek change. God of love, help us listen to your call. Redeemer God, may we live your good news in the whole of our lives showing others the gifts we have received from you. We bring before you the preconceptions and prejudices that we need to lay down at the foot of the cross. Take them and transform them. Renew us and use us to make your inclusive love known in the world. God of love, Help us listen to your call. Healing God in uncertain times, we pray for those who are struggling and are fearful and worried about the future. 
We pray for those who are ill in body or mind. We pray for the broken-hearted and the broken-spirited. Give us strength to hold safe places of lament for those for whom there are no easy answers. God of love, help us listen to your call. We commend to your keeping, loving God, all who have died. Grant to their eternal souls your light, your peace and your love. Comfort those who mourn them. God of all, accept these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who calls us on to new life in you. Amen. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will Done on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we give those trespasses against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So today we remember that we are called to follow the way of Christ and to listen, to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, to see where God may take us, where God may call us, and to what God may call us. I'm standing at the place of baptism that call is heard at our baptism. And even if it happened when we were a tiny baby, God was calling us to follow Jesus. Discipleship, ministry, service flows from our baptism. Today, we affirm the presence of God among us. God calls us to share in worship. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Jesus, you are the way. Guide us on our journey. God calls us to share in prayer. Jesus said, remain in me, and I will remain in you. Jesus, you are the way. Guide us on our journey. God calls us to share the scriptures. Jesus met his disciples on the road and opened the scriptures to them. Jesus, you are the way. Guide us on our journey. Jesus calls us to share in communion. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, you are the way. Guide us on our journey. God calls us to share in service. 
Jesus said, as you do it for the least of these, you do it for me. Jesus, you are the way. Guide us on our journey. God calls us to share the good news. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus, you are the way. Guide us on our journey. So listen for the call of God. Listen for that call to follow Jesus and to walk with him and his way. Listen to what God might be calling you to. To work out your love for God. To work out your love for your neighbours. God has gifted you. How will you use those gifts? How will you follow Jesus? Going forward, listen to that call. And it's always, remember, a call of love. So let's remember that we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. So let's pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So wherever we are, we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.